Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello, everybody. It's a wonderful week here. It's episode 65. I'm Rob Scribner. You found RV Talk Radio. We're very happy to have you on the show. I'm going to talk about something kind of serious, kind of scary. Talks about RV pets. And let's get started. Getting right to the nitty gritty of a story I really want to share with you. And we also did a video about it. So you might hear a little repetitive information. But I need to tell you about actually a very sad story down here in Arizona. And there's lessons to be learned here. So uh, I really hope you pay attention to this. And if you have an RV pet, uh, this is really important if you come down south or you're in southern states or let's just say states that have critters, especially snakes. And that's what I want to talk about, rattlesnakes. So You know, Sherry and I, we're Northwest people. We don't have really that many critters and things like that. And you know that we love our cinder to death. And our kitty, of course. But this is mostly about dogs. And, yeah, I'm going to be talking about rattlesnakes. And, you know, depending on what you do or where you're at, you may never see one. But we're kind of of the outskirts of the Phoenix area. So we're right along the wildlife reserve type area. And so we see lots of wildlife. We see javelinas. We see little skunks running around, uh, road runners, uh, big giant frogs, um, owls and, um, all types of birds. And it's, uh, it's, it's nice if that's something you like. Uh, if not, I would, Highly recommend if you're like a snowbird coming down south to go into the big, bigger complexes where it's very rare to see any critters. But we like the outer outskirts because we like to go up in the mountains and things like that. So you probably know this is like the time that the snowbirds start coming down south. And the reason is is because it's getting cooler here in Arizona. So one of the little phenomenons that happen, especially in the outskirts, is we're going to talk about the rattlesnakes. Now, uh, Sherry and I have seen a couple, but we actually kind of go out and try to find them. Uh, not hardcore, just, you know, we just know when the weather is just right. So what I want to talk about is when the weather is just right. So what happens is uh, it starts cooling down here, and so the ground and the smaller rocks and stuff like that cool down quick. And snakes like to stay warm. So typically, uh, sometimes in the mornings, uh, right times in the evenings, you can typically see uh, a rattlesnake uh, on concrete like roads and and, and, and sidewalks. And so the reason they do that is the sidewalks or the concrete retains heat a little bit longer and they just warm themselves up. So they're just doing what rattlesnakes do, just trying to stay warm. Well, just a few nights ago, a gentleman who had two little Scotty... uh, dogs was in our little dog park we have a cute little dog park here it's uh fenced and uh um, well maintained it's a very nice place we take cinder there to play in fact we were in the dog park the same time this happened to this other um, gentleman with his two dogs and we just went in real quick let cinder do her thing and got out and i feel kind of embarrassed because i try to preach this and and i did it myself i i want to talk about the word vigilant But the first thing you need to also realize is be aware of what type of weather is happening in the area. If it was becoming a little cooler, which is a nice comfortable uh, temperature here at Arizona, um, you also need to start turning on your vigilance about snakes. So what happened is it was becoming nighttime and a gentleman came out and took his dog to the dog park where it was actually starting to get dark. And we do have a street lamp out here, so it's semi-lighted, or should I say lit, (laughs) put it that way. 
And he um, lets his dog run free, and that's what the dog park's all about. He sat down at the little bench. We have an um, we have a concrete area where we have a uh, a faucet and a play and a water bowl for all the dogs that we all share, and uh, try to maintain. And he sat down on the bench, and so his dogs are running around doing his thing. Anyway, the dogs came over and they come visit him and jump on his. Uh, knees a little bit and one goes underneath the park bench and got bit by a rattlesnake so oh my gosh so nobody was really there at the time other than we're just kind of all hearsay on all this stuff so um so my first thing is like well thank goodness he didn't get bit because this was the older gentleman who was actually suffering from a old timers early stages so uh uh, he's got enough on his mind without that problem, but also I'm sure his dogs are his life too. So what we understand is that evening he took him to uh, uh, animal clinic and it sounds like the dog made it. So that, that was good. However, what you need to know is when a dog gets bit, especially in the face and like that, they really have up to about 20 minutes to survive that bite. And, and to get anti-venom. So here's a couple of things you really need to put on your checklist when you come down here to a place like Arizona. One is, did you know that there is a vaccine? And I've talked about this before, but really you need to pay attention, snowbirds. There is a vaccine down here that you can get for your dog that um, is not a cure-all. It's not a... Uh, uh, oh, they get bit, everything's fine. It's it's a different kind of vaccine. It, uh, it it doesn't cost that much. It's from $25 to $40, somewhere in that range. They get one shot, and then four weeks later, get another shot. Now, I just got notified that they're starting to do a booster uh, six months later. So we're actually going to take Cinder in. She's had the shot, and we got it when we first got here. And she's going to get her booster uh, in, in November. So anyway, what this does is, if your dog is to get bit by a rattlesnake, it buys you time. Um, more time to get your dog to an emergency clinic for, for animals. Uh, that's all it does. It doesn't do anything else but buy you more time. Your dog needs to go get an antivenom. And um, what it does is help prevent some of the uh, organs from shutting down and things like that. So, but... Time is of the essence, and this is true for people, and it's true for dogs. So I just want to urge snowbirds that this gentleman probably, he, the last thing he ever thought that this could ever happen to his dogs, especially just going to a dog park. And so I'm sure that you might be passive about that stuff. I'm telling you, please, please go get the vaccine. Um, the second thing is when you come down to these areas, you need to... Get on the Google, or get on um, a directory, whatever it takes, and find out where all the 24-7 animal clinics are. That's important, really important, that if your dog gets bit and you need to get them to an animal shelter, you don't want to be, not shelter, but a clinic, you need to be prepared. You need to know where you're going. And... Uh, so I, as soon as you get into the areas that you're going to, you know that we have rattlesnakes, find out, just take that 10 minutes of your life and just write down where these different 24-7 animal clinics are and just put them on your bulletin board in your RV. So you just have it. So if you have an emergency, you just grab that thing, go out the door. Uh, your partner can be tracking it on your cell phone to get to that place for emergency treatment for your dog. So be vigilant and and start looking around. Like for example, for example, now when we go in the uh, dog park and we know the weather's a little cooler, just for a minute, especially if it's nighttime, just take your flashlight, look around and see if there's any critters in, in the places that you're taking your dog. The last thing I want to um, point out too is do not let your animals run free in the desert. Now I know you guys do this and I know there's people out there that, and I'm going to say it, don't like to pick up poop and so they'll go to a lot or something like that and take their dogs there so they can do their thing and not have to pick up after them. I know that's what you're doing. 
And those are ideal places for your dog to get bit by a rattlesnake. They roam around, they get their sniffers going, they're curious. If they're from a different region like the Northwest, they have no clue that a rattlesnake can hurt them. So let's just kind of review one more time. Be vigilant, look around. Just take an extra second before you release your dog in a dog park. Do not let them run free in the lots and in, 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 in uh, BLM land uh, that has that's lower elevation that has rattlesnakes. And uh, oh, by the way, there's also one more thing I want to bring up. We have some really big frogs here. They're toads. I don't know what they're actually called. I should look them up. I apologize. But if dogs see them, they usually come out at night. If they lick them, uh, so my understanding is it will make your dog very sick. So you need to be aware of that too. Once again, be vigilant. We see those frogs almost every night. So, and they are as big as a, a hamburger. They're big. Um, just don't let your dog go see them. They, um, just let your dog know they're bad. So be vigilant. Uh, don't let your animals run free. Find out where the emergency clinics are for, um, for pets and get the rattlesnake vaccine for your dog. It's worth it. Take those simple little steps and you will have a great time down here in the South. So guys, if you ever listen to me, especially about your RV pets, listen to me about this. Follow through what I'm talking about. You will be a happy camper if something happens. So let's move on. Well, hey, uh, I'm going to take the middle of the show to kind of give our normal little message here, but a little different. I want to remind you that if you are a channel or you have a blog or a blog that you're uh, uh, running and you're interested in being in our show, give us a holler because it's getting harder and harder and harder for Sherry and I to monitor all these shows and all these video uh, channels and stuff. And uh, frankly, we've been knocking down how many subscriptions we have because we just cannot watch everything. And uh, so uh, just like last week's interview, it was really nice because we were actually notified that someone was interested in being in the show. Then we kind of check them out a little bit and we go, yeah, that's exactly the kind of thing we want on the show. And um, so don't be afraid or don't be shy uh, we're not going to uh, think you're, uh, you know, we're going to check you out, but please let us know if you're interested in being in the show. Uh, we've had a lot of great channels on this show. A lot of people love to do their interviews and talk, talk about themselves, and that's just, <laughs> that's just how it is. And trust me, if you, people have got channels, they want to talk about themselves and say what their channel is all about and why they are what they are. And that's great. And so please go to RV Talk Radio, go to the uh, contact page, shoot us a note. It's private. Nobody sees it. You can go to our Facebooks too. Uh, RV Talk Radio has their own Facebook page. Go to the top, see a button that says message, shoot us a note. Same thing on RV Travel Buddy has a Facebook page too. You can go on the top of that, contact us. And last but not least, you have a private email of mine, which is rob at RV Talk Radio. Comes directly to me. And uh, you can let us know if you're interested in being on the show. Uh, and on top of all that, we love your feedback too. So if you have questions or things you'd like us to talk about, uh, let us know. If it's a subject we don't feel like that we're experts in, we'll probably tell you here's another place to go. For example, I got a note just the other day. Someone was asking about making modifications in their RV and cutting into the walls and stuff like that. And I know a gentleman, his name's uh, Aaron from Three Tails RV, has done a whole bunch of that stuff. And so I just say, hey, contact that person. He really can give you good answers about some of the experiences he had. So there you go. Contact us. Let us know if you'd like to be on the show. And contact us if you have some questions or comments or feedback that you'd like to give us. 
uh, to uh, help us uh, mold the show to something you'd like to hear about. And uh, a lot of times our show will have one idea what we're going to do for the show and we'll get some feedback in. And uh, you literally will change our minds or say, that's a great subject. And we'll actually talk about that. So really, it's important that we hear from you and your opinion and your feedback and your ideas really do count. So give us a holler, folks. So I have to laugh a little bit and you got to kind of get a chuckle out of this. Uh, uh, we just hit a milestone in videos. We actually broke over for RV Travel Buddy over 400 videos. And then our other channels combined, we're over 500 and some odd. So uh, if you didn't know what some of those other channels are, we also have a channel called uh, uh, Paradigm Chimes, which is kind of my little rant channel. And uh, we have Imagine 180, which is, talks about law of attraction. And uh, we're experimenting with a new one, we're like, what will people do? Um, and we'll see how that one goes. And we just uh, have a little fun, and, and we do stuff that sometimes isn't always RV-related. We just like to have a, something different. Um, but the funny thing is, is twice now, we've had people show up in our... Because, you know, snowbirds are showing up and rallies are happening here. And uh, we get to talk, and they go, oh, I have seen you on... You know, we've seen you on uh, YouTube. And both of them remember... Sherry, <laughs> not me. I do most of the videos. Sherry, and both times I think it was the, uh, uh, especially it was uh, uh, with the uh, Heartland uh, rally we had here. They're really into the RV lock, and um, uh, they were a main, you know, a main sponsor for us at the beginning of the year, and they start still are a supporting sponsor for this channel. And if you go to, um, go to. RV Talk Radio, and go to the site there, and you'll see a button that says uh, "Product Review." You can still get a significant discount uh, using our code to get an RV lock, and uh, we love ours. And uh, there was a lot of folks down here that had RV locks, and so that's kind of, uh, I guess, when they bought them, they were looking up how to install them, and then our video came up really well that showed Sherry installing the RV lock on our <laughs> RV. So it's funny. It's like are you kidding me? I like I'm the one that's in most of the videos, and Sherry gets all the all the glory, which is okay. I don't mind a bit, but it was kind of funny. So you know, we gotta have a little humor or two. And the other thing I wanted to share with you was uh, we also did a video about this. Was was kind of out of the blue, and not sure how it actually happened, but we got to watch a a great horned owl get re-released into the. Um, well, get their freedom basically out in the outdoors here. And I told you we're right on the edge of the main uh, uh, Indian reservation that goes out and then off the pace and all that's BLM land and a uh, great place to release animals. Lots of wildlife here. So a group called libertywildlife.org. Um, they have volunteers and they have a, an owl that was uh, I think abandoned from a nest, and so they kept it uh, wild. They use what's called flyaway cages. They don't let people touch them much. Make sure that they teach them how to, you know, catch mice and things like that. And uh, very little human contact until they get old enough that they can release them. So we did a video, and you'll see that in a, about a week of this um, a great, a great horned owl being released right here by our RV. It was really, really cool and uh, got quite the education. So, yeah, you just never know what's going to happen in this RV park. So, yeah, uh, be watching for that video. Uh, it's called a great horned owl uh, release uh, and should come out, I think, in about a week, week and a half. Another uh, video coming out, uh, just to kind of add on to all this, is we did a video with... Uh, um, diverse, diversified RV repair. And, uh, I had them, uh, wash our rig and I like him and, and he actually charges just pretty much normal stuff. Uh, he's pretty detail oriented and is really, um, into what products he uses on RVs. And, uh, so we, uh, filmed him and also gave him a chance to go through his process of how he washes his RV and what he uses. So be watching for that video too. I believe that comes out this week on th Tuesday or Thursday, uh, on Thursday, I believe, um, Tuesday. And so, yeah, uh, all kinds of little stuff coming out, just shooting all over the place. 
And uh, we also just got, you know, the video out that we were telling you about uh, where we got the AC working in our boat and showed you some performance boats up there and things like that. So that just came out today. Um, uh, well, uh, came out last Monday, something like that. Yeah, so I can't remember anymore. But, yeah, lots of videos coming out. So we appreciate everybody who's been watching our stuff and listening to our show. And uh, we like to stay um, lots of variety, so we don't want to get stuck in doing the same old thing. And uh, we really try hard to go off on a tangent a little bit so we're not like everybody else. If you want to, if I wanted to be like everybody else, I'd just watch their channels. So anyway, I hope you enjoy that. Yeah, it probably keeps us from being a big gigantic channel, but uh, we're happy with it. And the people that uh, that are subscribed to us and stuff like that are almost like truly good friends and stuff. And we appreciate that. So anyway, yeah, lots of stuff going on. Well, a little bit of news now for, for about our boat up in um, Lake Powell. So what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be going up there and we're going to do some, um, we're going to actually go through a canal that's up there. As Doug, I don't know that much history about it, I'm going to find out, to uh, be a bypass from having to go away around over by the dam and across so we can go farther up the lake. So we're kind of looking forward to getting some photos of that. It'll be in about two weeks. Uh, what we're going to be doing um, up there is, you may not know this, you know, Flagstaff, they get snow, and, and Paige can get pretty cold, too, in the winter. And it's hard to believe that's Arizona, huh? So what we're going to do at the end of the month, we're actually pulling the boat out of the lake and bringing it down here. And when we do that, we're also going to be adding some equipment to it, uh, a new depth finder and fish finder, um, doing some modifications to the dining room table, and uh, just some little things, adding some... Uh, um, lock type things to the doors and things like that so uh it's a great opportunity to pull it we also want to reseal uh one of the um uh the drain plug in the back it seems a little loose and it's probably letting water into the trans uh, into the uh, belge and so uh it's a good chance to pull it and do that so the other thing that's kind of interesting is when i pull our boat out of uh lake powell it's going to be contaminated <laughs> it's like what and it's like, if you don't know this, Lake Powell has a muscle, a um, little clam muscle um, problem that came from, you know, boats coming from the ocean or whatever and contaminated the lake and it took over the lake. And, and so what they don't want is it to interfere with all the other lakes around here, like Lake Pleasant or some of the other fishing lakes in Utah and stuff like that. So when you pull your boat, you'll have to drain it and there's two ways i think i've told you this a little bit about it but there's two ways to get uncontaminated one is to let your boat sit for a period of time uh, it can be 18 to 30 days or you can get a hot water treatment which some of the marinas have that's a free service at my understanding that's paid by the uh, wildlife uh, group um to um, so when you get pulled out they immediately have to go to a staging area and they put this cable between your trailer and your boat and they actually kind of stamp stamp it where you can't take it off uh saying that you're contaminated to a, either a certain date or when you go up and get the hot water treatment done on your boat uh they'll remove it is my understanding so i don't know the whole process because i've never pulled my boat out of the lake yet but i do have to deal with the fact is if i pull my boat i cannot unless i get it treated uh go to like lake pleasant and drop it in there immediately well that's not going to be a problem because we're going to pull it down here let it set and and do some work on it um putting some equipment in it and, and jazzing it up and we're going to take it back to lake powell in march so between that time and then we may actually take it over to either uh lake pleasant uh in a couple of months and enjoy it during the winter months uh which will still be nice and warm and toasty here it's 70 80 degrees in the winter or we may actually take it over to san diego maybe in uh, more there for a couple weeks uh, a couple months and enjoy the ocean a little bit who knows um 
you know, we have the right to change your mind. <laughs> so that's uh, some of the things we're doing. We uh, are looking forward to taking, you know, getting up in the boat. And uh, not this weekend we'll be up there, but the weekend after that we we'll do four days. And we're going to do our first go through the canal and actually anchor and spend a night in the boat somewhere up uh, somewhere pretty. And uh, so that'll be kind of fun. Uh, it's kind of you'll see how we use actually three anchors. Uh, we have a main anchor, and then we have two what we call side anchors that kind of hold us in place and, and, and relieve the main anchor because it tends to be kind of a sandy bottom there and stuff, and you just never know how well the anchoring can be. And uh, if you're a boater or a cruiser or even a sailor, you know you don't sleep real well when you don't have faith in your anchor and you don't want to... Uh, uh, it, just, it just makes it hard to sleep because you worry about the boat all night, so... Uh, having <clears throat> extra anchors and kind of um, putting on alarms where if you got a GPS plotter and you say if it moves to a certain point, an alarm goes off. Uh, those are kind of nice peace of mind to have. So, yes, lots of stuff going on up there at Lake Powell. And uh, I really am trying to get some fishing in. So I, I um, uh, kind of a sneak thing is we're adding a new playlist on our channel eventually here for fishing. If I could just get enough time to get up there and do some fishing i've actually invested a whole bunch of money in that got our licenses and i'm really eager to try the fishing up there and um and then share it with you folks and see if i'm successful or not because it's a new kind of fishing for me so that's what's going on with the boat i hope you enjoy that remember we wouldn't have the opportunity to use this boat and share this kind of stuff with you if we weren't full-time rvers because once again, at this age, uh, our lowers our cost of living a little bit and allows us to have a few more toys um, to and resources to share some of this stuff with you guys. So, yes, it may not sound like RVing, but it really is. Um, because we're RVers, we're able to do this. So, there you go. Now, i got a subject I'd like to talk about. And... I think what stimulated it was actually watching a sailing show, the, the Vagabond. And they were talking about garbage and uh, how to deal with it. I cannot believe how much garbage Sherry and I produce. And we don't really try to. But, man, it's like... Oh, for example, you go to a grocery store and you say, I'm going to cook a lasagna tonight. So you cook it it's got a plastic cover on it it's got a box um as soon as you're done cooking it you gotta take the plastic off of it you get this box and um I, I mean just all day long it's amazing how we make garbage like i have a keurig and so i got those little dispensers of coffee and uh, now I kind of like, wow, do you realize how much plastic I go through to make coffee now as opposed to the old-fashioned pots of just like a Mr. Coffee Maker? And it just goes on and on. I might have a chicken pot pie for lunch or something because uh, <laughs> I'm not the biggest cook in the world. And once again, there's some garbage there. Um, it, it just never stops. It's just garbage, 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 garbage. And uh, you get a pizza or buy a pizza, uh, have a pizza delivered. You got a box there and you got um, everything's got these packaging. And then if you buy like a equipment for your RV or something or you order something from Amazon, it's got packing material, the box. Then it's got the packaging itself and it's usually plastic and, and uh, just garbage, garbage, garbage. And then the same thing with these guys who are talking about sailing. What? that when they're in open ocean and stuff, do they uh, throw their garbage overboard if it's biodegradable? For example, let's say you're out in the ocean and you've got a can of um, peaches you're eating. Um, everything about that can in the paper is biodegradable. Is it okay just to sink it and let it go into the ocean just and let it rot? Is that... You know, because the problem is when they're out in the boats or, or sailing or cruising for long periods of time, they get an accumulation of garbage. And the problem is that 
also attracts bugs and creates things like that. So it's um, and we have the same you have the same problem with the RV. You can't really store certain things in certain ways. And like for example, we'll buy cereal, put it in the plastic containers, and then we throw away the cereal box, which has a plastic thing inside of it, and uh, because otherwise it'll attract sugar ants. So garbage. What do you guys do about reducing your garbage? So I, I guess some of the things I would suggest or probably put up for debate is do you buy more quantities of things and then pack them yourself and try to, that might produce less garbage, but it still produces garbage. Um, is there certain practices in an RV that certain pieces of garbage that um, like fruit and, and uh, peelings of uh, is... Uh, is there something different you could do with that instead of just throwing it away? Um, I don't know. It's 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 just amazing to watch how much garbage. And I, I hate it when we go shopping for, like Sherry and I will do a Saturday where we have to get a bunch of stuff for the boat. We got to get a bunch of things for the RV and all that stuff, and then we unpack it and then all that, and we realize, oh my gosh, look at all this garbage, and it's like, uh, I don't know, is. I sure hope someday that we can find a way to make packaging more biodegradable. That's one. And uh, um, I don't know. It just seems like the garbage that we accumulate and produce is just way over the top for just you, Sherry and I. And I, I wonder what other people think about that. And and I know there's some solutions out there, and I'm, I'm not actually saying them on the show here. I'd love to hear your solutions of what you do to reduce your uh, garbage uh, <laughs> production of garbage and uh, what you can do to at least reduce it and maybe how you shop, how you... Um, uh, live your life in your RV or your sailboat or your boat. Uh, it'd be interesting to have that up for a discussion. And so if I get some comments and if I get some information about that, I'll share that on the next show. So, yeah, let's talk about garbage and how you produce it. How, if you're even surprised how much you produce and are you trying to reduce it? How are you reducing it? With some ideas that we can share with our listeners. Appreciate that. like to talk about a few things that we do on the side here at an RV, well, Outdoor Travel Channel. And uh, we don't talk about them a lot because we don't try to get too many people all at once and we just kind of trickle our customers. But we actually, and uh, we just you know had a, a new client come on board, we own what's called Help With Blogs. And the way that works is we constantly meet people that are interested in having a blog or a website. Now, a website uh, requires you know knowing a little HTML, and they're kind of a static page, as opposed to uh, blogging, which uh, typically most people use WordPress. And so, you know, you get someone that's not real familiar with all this stuff. It's a little intimidating. So we created a program that allows um, people that want to have a blog but need some coaching and need someone to kind of be there for them. And so what we do is for $29.95 a month, we you know, help them set up their domain, get them hosting. We have our own servers, and we set up their blog and database for the blog. And we get it all tuned in, and we give them a lot of things that we already like as far as what's called plugins and a couple of themes and we get it all set up and running and then give them access inside it and we have access too and so um, there's no such thing as a dumb question with our group um, if you've never had a blog before it's like how do I post a picture and how do I play with the text and how do I uh, get a newsletter to work and how do I uh, uh, set up a contact page and make a form and all that stuff that's what we do so as this twenty nine ninety five a month goes on, um, as people people have different levels of understanding, eventually when they're uh, at a point where they feel like they can go off on their own, we shut off that twenty nine ninety five, change them just to hosting, and it's twelve ninety five a month just for hosting. 
And that doesn't mean that people can't still call us and say, you know, I, I'm trying to move a particular item over here on this one page and I don't understand why it won't move. And I was like, okay, and we have administrative access into their site. So we get in there and go, oh, I see what's going on. And we teach them how to do it. And if they don't know the answer, we'll research it till we get the answer. Because some people do something on their website that we may not normally do. And so anyway, it's called Help With Blogs. You can, you do, all you have to do is contact me. I'm the one that helps you. We set you up on our own servers and there's one of those things where you're not stuck. If you decide you want to move on later, no big deal, but we help you along. We even help you with the process. We have our own domain manager. So if you want to buy a domain, just go to Northwest Domains with an S dot com and What's really cool about that is no games and gimmicks and commercials there. You buy a domain, you have a complete access or in control of your domain. You're not going to get a bunch of commercial emails and crap like that. <laughs> anyway, and then uh, uh, just because you buy your domain through us doesn't mean that you have to host through us either. So anyway, we help you understand all that stuff from the domain to the hosting to the actual WordPress and then also the things within the WordPress to make it function for you until you're happy with the layout you got. And uh, blogs are great, especially if you want to keep a journal and if you want to keep a daily log of things. And that's a great way to go. We go to a static page, it gets a little confusing and gets a little bit cumbersome. So if you ever decide that you'd like to have a blog and want to get started, you can start with us too and move on later if you want. We don't mind. You're not going to offend us. Um, it's a great, it's a spare income that we have on the side here. And at the same time, we really help our clients. And our most of the time, I mean, uh, all of our clients, well, not most of the time, all the time, all of our clients are kind of friends of ours. And so we just kind of, uh, um, it's nice to have it that way. We don't have too many. We're not overwhelmed. And so we'll spend that extra time with you. And... Um, we, you know, we prefer older clients and stuff like that, or just like, just getting ready to go full timing, and they like to have a video, uh, have a, a blog or a vlog type uh, setup, or and we have young couples too. Um, just give us a holler. Just go to our, um, just contact me at a, uh, Rob at rvtalkradio.com or uh, or actually just go to our help with vlog uh, help with blogs dot com, and I think we have a contact. Uh, email there too but yeah just give us a holler and ask us or just go to our facebook and ask us some questions about it and if it's something that fits you where you feel like you have a friend you're not feeling belittled um we know you're intelligent so you just you know somebody could talk about race cars and building engines and i go duh i'm not an engine guy so i'm i do understand wordpress hosting and domains and so i just pass that information to you to a way that you can understand it and then we take care of the background stuff the technical stuff you don't want to worry about so you can just worry about your blog so if it's a service you're interested in please give us a holler it helps us it's good for the company it's good for supporting our different platforms and we appreciate it so yeah that's one of our services yeah i thought i'd kind of add on to that a little bit too also is is people don't realize you can have your blog posts directly to your Facebook and Twitter and there's all these really nice tools in there that kind of help uh, reduce some of the time you need to spend to do what they call social marketing so um, WordPress is so good for that kind of service and then setting up an email system that's automated where you don't have to personally go in there and, 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 and tweak it. If somebody gets your newsletter and then they decide they don't want it, uh, you have to do what's called an opt-in, opt-out type thing. Uh, you can They can automatically just press a button at the bottom and unsubscribe. They're not upset. You're happy. Nobody's upset with you. It's just a really nice way to have a website, if you want to put it that way. And it has all these little automated little engines you put in it to do different things that you'd like your website to do. So anyway, uh, even if you'd never go with us, if someday you want to have a website, I highly recommend you get a blog. WordPress is the one that's used the most. It's an actual piece of software that ties into a database. And uh, if you don't want to mess around with that part of it, that's what we do. 
So yeah, uh, you'll notice, uh, if you don't know this, many of the big websites you guys monitor and watch all the time, their websites are blogs. Uh, sometimes you think they just look like websites. Well, that's how nice blogs are getting nowadays. Uh, they look just like websites, but uh, the search engines love them. Search engines love blogs. This is all there's to it. They're easy to do good SEO or good search engine optimization in. And, and it's just um, a good platform to have. And you can modify it and change the look of it anytime you want. You're just not stuck with one thing. And it's inexpensive. That's the other important thing. So there you go. Get a blog someday. Make it WordPress. <laughs>I got to be a hero just the other day and I didn't even know it. So one, about two nights ago, uh, Sherry and I, I think we went out to dinner and we got home and it was dark and we have a new RV that's um, by us. In fact, it's a beautiful 2017 Montana and uh, nice people. And they also you know, showed me their new rig. It was really neat. And uh, a really strange thing happened is I, I was, we got home and it's like, I could hear water spraying and I looked over at the rig and over by the spigot, their hose cracked and there was water shooting everywhere. They had a little lake back there. So I, I just went over there and shut off their water. I had Sherry write a note that I could put on the door saying, hey, I had to shut off your water. It was spraying all over. Well, they were very grateful. In fact, when they got home, um, they uh, I saw them pull up and so I just hopped out of the RV and, and greeted them and say, hey, I'm Sorry, but I had to shut off your water. Your water was spraying everywhere, and they were very grateful. But there is a lot more to that than I even thought um, going on. So um, most of us all have, you know, uh, refrigerators in our rigs that have, uh, you know, you open up the back and you can get in there, and there's uh, uh, the the burner there, and there's also it's electrical, and uh, also some of the electronics are there. So get a load of this. What I didn't realize when I was going over where that water was shooting, and it happened to be shooting right at the refrigerator off down the rig a little bit. And if you look at your vents, you'll notice that they kind of angled downward. So the water was shooting upward. So what was going on at the same time is water is being shot into his refrigerator in the back end. So... Um, Anyway, when I was there, he had me come in real quick. He was showing me something he did in his uh, setting up a computer, and I thought it was kind of cool. And his refrigerator started going beep, 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 you know that, and it had an error code on it. And the last thing we were even thinking about was what went on outside. And so we're looking at it, and he looked it up, and it's like, there's a, and I told you some of the weird things that had happened with my refrigerator, and it had some of the similarities of that. But what we didn't realize is what he what happened is that water was shooting up inside the backside of that fridge and it was just soaking wet when he said he opened that up the thing was just full of water and it shorted out a little regulator type of uh, deal i don't know exactly what it does but it's very similar and i guess this has happened a lot in many rvs because um uh, Demetric, I, I don't remember the name of them, um, that make the refrigerators, put this silly little regulator or, or protection right in front of that vent. And uh, not only could it short out by the way it did with his, but it could happen if someone was pressure washing your rig. And so he's got a, uh, luckily we have Todd over here, which I've told you so much about, um, uh, ordered him a new one and then what they're going to try to do is not put it in the same place uh, as before so when the rig does get washed or pressure washed that it doesn't get shorted out again so bad design not Montana's fault it's not it could be in any of the rigs out there that have um, uh, this little control regulator that's uh, I guess it's a backup to shut off refrigerators if they overheat so I don't know the technical um, word for what that regulator or that little fuse type thing does, but it was added into RVs because of some issues of them catching fire because the refrigerator was getting overheating and it literally shuts off the refrigerator before that happens. So it's a safety piece of equipment, but apparently gets shorted out and they've been lo locating them and a silly area which is right in front of the vent where 
water, uh, rain, uh, moisture can get to it really easy. So you might want to take a look at your rig, maybe see if that's protected. Um, maybe uh, other rigs that they're, uh, that little unit is not exposed so easily. But just think about how easy it would be to spray water up in there and short that out. So that was a real interesting thing to find out here just the other day. And this was a brand new 2017. So you're not prone from um, having thing, little disasters and stuff. So you have to be really careful and think some of this. Who would have thought? Let's put it that way. Who would have thought would have happened? So that kind of brings me to the other thing. We've uh, also noticed the water pressure uh, um, fluctuating here. And so it's, if you don't run a regulator on your hose... Uh, for example, the one the, typically the ones you get are like um, 30 to 40 or 40 to 45 uh, psi, and then uh, we have ours is 40 to 55. Um, and what it does is is the plumbing in your RV is just not designed to be able to handle heavy pressure. And so, wouldn't that be a terrible thing that if you didn't have something regulating that the be gone for dinner and come back and find water spraying away uh, underneath uh, the cupboard in your kitchen and flooding out your RV. Um, the, it's just, you know, it's no different than electrical boxes too. I mean, put, I mean, surge protectors and put water regulators on your hose. It's a, they're not that expensive. They're about nineteen dollars for a regular one. You can get. Fancier ones if you want, they're up to 40, 50 bucks. But uh, put something on, for God's sakes, because uh, these RV parks, um, it's not necessarily their fault. It's just the water systems that they have that provide the RV park um, can fluctuate in water pressure, and especially down here in Phoenix. So uh, give yourself a peace of mind. Always have a water regulator on your hose. And yes, it may you may not have that really great pressure that you had without it, but it's better than finding coming home and finding out your rigs uh, flooding. Um, the other thing is if you're leaving for the weekend or something like that and leaving your RV and stuff, shut off your water. Just shut it off. Just why even have to worry about it? Just shut your water off. And uh, and it goes for electrical too. If you got a 50 amp or a 30 amp RV or both. Um, have a surge protector for them, and I know they're expensive. The 50 amp ones are over 200 bucks, and uh, with tax and all. And uh, uh, but I'm telling you, if you don't have that and something happens, the damages will be astronomical. You will just be shocked of how much it would cost you to fix all the electronic components in your RV because you didn't protect it. So do it, guys. Water protection, electrical protection along with all the other normal things of protection, whether it comes to waxing your rig or uh, cleaning things or, or protecting the tires, putting covers on them. There's a reason for all that. And if you if you just take the time to do it, you'll never regret it, other than the fact it's a inconvenience and it costs money. But once you've done it, you have that peace of mind, and that's pretty important. The other thing I'd like to bring up to you is for people with uh, especially fifth wheels, is these fifth wheel hitches. Um, just the other day, one of these guys from the uh, Heartland Rally were pulling out and they have one of those fifth wheel hitches that retract. It can slide on a slider and it can move back. And they're really nice for short bed trucks and stuff and allows you to turn sharper. Uh, apparently, he it was not locked down all the way and when he was just driving out of the park where he was kind of hitting the gas kind of hard the thing slipped and, and shot back and um, because of the surge and the weight literally bent the truck bed uh, inward which uh, um, did lots of damage uh, apparently he was still able to move he had taught you know call up Todd over there and they looked at it and had got it set in a way that he could get it to at least, you know, uh, camping world or something and see what they can do to uh, fix it. But um, I can guarantee you it's going to cost them a, a lot of money. And so that brings me back to saying, okay, along with all the big things you have to do, making sure your trailer's hooked up right and fifth wheel and or, or mo even motorhomes, on a fifth wheel, Sherry and I always carry little flashlights in our pocket. <clears throat> so when I back into my hitch on the fifth wheel and we and then we 
clicks and the handle goes in, telling me that the teeth are um, around the um, uh, the pin. Uh, Sherry and I literally will take a flashlight and and confirm that that actually did happen. Even though the little handle went in, we still confirm. The other thing we'd always do is um, is while the RV is still on its feet, I'll do a little surge um, with the truck um, just to double check that that pin is holding. Um, it's I'd rather do it that way and be gentle, try, not too hard, just a little bit, just to give it. I want resistance to see if it pops out of, a, out of the hitch. That way, at least I know it's still on its feet and it's not going to drop down on my truck and damage it. So uh, that's the two procedures that Sherry and I do to make sure that hitch is holding. Verify that the pin on the fifth wheel is has the lock around it. And second, just do a little surge test to make sure that thing's holding. Um, otherwise, you can really damage your truck something fierce. So anyway, just a little uh, peace of mind and something I we just witnessed the other day. Someone that had their truck damaged now it was locked in this pin but the lower section wasn't locked which is on a slider and so boy you just there's so much so many things that can go wrong um you know you can always get a checklist and there's an app that you can put in your phone that's called rv checklist if that helps you do it if you want to make your own list or something but the other thing that always happens is do not let people talk to you while you're bringing your rv in or bringing it out. Um, don't get distracted. Uh, you and your partner, or if it's just you, uh, kind of have a way of, of or procedure of how you take your RV in and out. You need to make sure that you follow your procedures. And having somebody there talking to you could uh, distract you. And uh, it's happened to me so many times that I'll literally ask somebody that wants to talk to me right away, especially since we from RV Talk Radio and RV Travel Buddy. I'll ask them, please don't be offended, but may I take the time to talk to you in five or ten minutes because I'm afraid I might make a mistake here. So, anyway, food for thought. One more message I have for the snowbirds. And uh, it actually, I should have put this at the front of the show when we we're talking about critters and rattlesnakes and stuff like that. <coughs> but uh, just a, a good example. Uh, I read this the other day. Somebody was um, uh, leaving from a park, and I think this was actually last last season, and reached up underneath their RV and got bit by a rattlesnake. And so an um, example of that is Sherry and I uh, had to move our RV the other day, I said it in a couple episodes ago, and we had tire covers. And... Uh, just a reminder, in a RV park or, or in Arizona, that's also a great place for critters to hide. So uh, I removed mine, and she went to the other side and removed hers. And no, there wasn't a rattlesnake. <laughs> but there was the biggest lizard I've ever seen. I swear that thing was about seven to eight inches long, a big guy. And he was just content and happy as a lark living inside our tire uh, under the tire covers. So once again, that's another heads up of being vigilant. Now, Sherry and I were both prepared for that. So we've taught ourselves to be vigilant. So when we're reaching up underneath the tires and moving things, we cautiously go in, inspect, see if we have any critters. And uh, uh, it just can happen. No, I mean, and yes, we we did have a critter, but it was not one that was going to hurt us. So just a reminder, guys to be vigilant. I know I talked about that at the beginning of the show. It really, um, it's nice down here, but it is the desert. And uh, uh, if you have pets, be vigilant. And for yourself, be vigilant. Uh, just think before you do. And ask yourself, where would a critter, like a rattlesnake, uh, hide out if they wanted to hide out in my RV? And tire covers is a great place. Also, if you keep any boxes or anything like that underneath your RV, uh, especially if they got little wheels on them and have a little space underneath them, once again, it's a great place for a critter to hide. And so you need to think about that when you're down here. So snowbirds, we welcome you. 
but we also ask you to be careful. I know you're not used to this area. I, too, uh, have to get used to this area and still learning about it. And uh, uh, some real eye openers have <laughs> happened lately, so I want to pass those on to you. So, it's getting to be the end of our show. We appreciate everybody for listening. We pre uh, really appreciate the support we get. And uh, once again, if you're interested in a blog or something like that, just give us a holler. We also urge you to contact us and give us some feedback. Tell us what we're doing, good, bad, or indifferent. We appreciate it. So we love you all. We ask everybody to be safe and be cautious and be vigilant. I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you in episode 66 <laughs> next week on Mondays. Bye now. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a patron supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.